Hey, what's up, witches? It's me, Luna. I don't know if you can hear my son singing in the background. He's in the shower. <laughs> anyway, I have an offer and an unboxing for you. And the offer is um, for a reading. If you purchase a deck for me from the Amazon wish list that's in the description below, when I do my unboxing video and I test drive it, the test drive will be a personal reading for you. What a deal, eh? Let's take a look at what we have today. This is a U.S. games deck, my favorite publisher, and I've been, you know, filling in particularly some of the older decks. Um, some of them are out of print and I'm hunting for them, but some of them are still available. Hooray for me. This is the Brotherhood of Light Egyptian Tarot, created by the Church of Light. And I, I, I knew I was, you know... How do I say this? I went on to eclectic.net. If you don't know about eclectic.net, I'll put the title down here. Um, you should. It used to have a very active forum. The forum has been archived, but the website is still there. And you will see, you can search by publisher, um, but every deck you've ever heard of or never heard of pretty much is on that site. And you can get a look at it and, you know, uh, sample of several cards. So I went on there and searched U.S. games and I made a, a list of ones that I don't have that I'm interested in getting and this was one. Uh, and I don't know anything about it, which is kind of fun. Brotherhood of Light, U.S. games, uh, designed by Vicki Brewer. The Brotherhood of Light Egyptian Tarot deck provides companion cards to the acclaimed book, The Sacred Tarot by C.C. Zane. Okay, got to get that too. Which explores the relationships between the Tarot, Kabbalah, astrology, and numerology. The original 1936 black and white images have been redesigned as full color Egyptian Tarot cards. Okay, so I like the way it's designed includes 78 card deck with an instruction book. And look at this, we have a letter, we have a suit from playing cards, and then we've got a, a bull here and someone on a horse. So I'm so very intrigued. <laughs> I have deplasticed just to make life easy for us. Oops. This will be getting the tape you know, I keep thinking, do you want, you guys want to see a video of me doing my tape thing on this? It's, n it's not that interesting, but if you're interested, I'll do it for you. Why not? <clears throat> Pardon me. How to use Brotherhood of Light Egyptian Tarot cards? Holy shit. Okay, this is kind of intimidating, right? Come on, camera pop back. There we go. All right. Lots of symbols. This is copyright 2010. I'm surprised. This says 2009 on the bottom of this, but this says 2010. It's so funny. Just uh, 14 years ago, and I am I feel like I'm talking about the decks that came out in the 80s. So mm, my sense of timing has been permanently damaged. <laughs> Table of Contents, Introduction, How Brotherhood of Light Diff... Uh, Light Tarot cards differ from other decks. Why Brotherhood of Light Tarot, a brief history, meaning of 22 major arcana, meaning of the courts, meaning of the minors, interpreting the cards in two sample spreads. Let's see if we have anything about the author. Nope. Wow, we've got this whole list on the back of other Brotherhood of Light books, books published by the Church of Light since 1932. Wow, all right. Brotherhood of Light Egyptian Tarot comprises the companion cards to the widely acclaimed book. Okay, we saw that. This booklet contains a small sampling of the information contained in the complete book. The Sacred Tarot provides a full history of tarot, detailed interpretations, and complete instructions on how to use the cards. The book reveals the relationships between the tarot and the Kabbalah, astrology, alchemy, magic, numerology, mystery school initiation, Bible study, and Freemasonry. This profusely illustrated book is indexed and contains descriptions for 12 different tarot spreads. Also included is a detailed table of correspondences which shows the correlations between each tarot major arcanum and its associated herb, gem, mineral, Hebrew, Egyptian, and Roman glyph, as well as a correct numerological, as the correct numerological and astrological associations. 
The complete set of Egyptian tarot cards consists of 22 major arcana, 40 minor, and 16 quarts for a total of 78 cards. The following pages of this booklet provide short descriptions and interpretations for each of the 78 cards. And two spreads. Why Brotherhood of Light Tarot? Following in the tradition of the Hermetic Brotherhood of Light, these tarot cards are an integral part of an internally consistent exposition of occult science in which astrology, alchemy, and magic, the tarot, in parentheses, are integrated. Unique to this system is the correspondence of the 12 zodiacal signs and 36 ultra zodiacal decanate constellations to the major and minor arcana. The book's spiritual astrology and delineating the horoscope by C.C. Zane lend deeper meaning to the minor arcana. Okay, so decanates are um, in astrology, you know, there's 360 degrees in the wheel. There are 12 signs, which means each of them is 30 degrees. And each of those 30 degree signs are broken into three 10 degree segments, which are called decanates. Color is an important factor in focusing. Okay, blah, blah, blah. Color is an important factor in focusing the unconscious mind's ability to extract inner meaning from each card. Each of the major arcana is associated with a corresponding color. In this deck, the color is represented in the cartouche border. The first nine minor arcana correspond to the first nine major arcana. Okay. For example, arcanum one corresponds to mercury and its color is violet. In turn, mercury as significator of study writing, correspondence, and travel gives meaning to each of the aces. Okay. News of a business opportunity, news of sickness or death, short journey, a letter from a loved one, the cartouche border for Arcanum 1 and the aces is violet. The pattern continues, and it tells you what those things are. Uh, about the card backs, the inspiration for the card back is derived from the tradition of the carpet page found in illuminated manuscripts such as the 8th century Lindisfarne Gospels. The design is composed of two mirrored images. Okay, diamond shape, blah, blah, blah. I don't think we need to read all of that. <clears throat> okay, brief history of the Brotherhood of Light Egyptian Tarot. I'm sure their entire history is not contained here. The oldest existing Tarot cards are from mid-15th century Milan. These cards are from several decks spread across numerous collections and collectively are referred to as the Visconti Sforza deck. In the late 18th century, a manuscript titled Egyptian Mysteries began circulating in Europe among Masonic and occult circles. Attributed to Iamblichus, it describes the ritual of Egyptian initiation and includes descriptions of the tarot trumps as reliefs carved into the columns of the initiation chamber. Uh, modern scholarship disputes Iamblichus's authorship of the manuscript and suggests it's a contemporary work from the mid to late 1700s. Regardless of antiquity, it's one of the oldest works to explore the philosophical rather than the divinatory significance of the cards. Subsequent occult writers drew heavily upon this manuscript, including Paul Christian, um, Jean-Baptiste Pitois, author of Historie de la Magie. The prototype for all future Egyptian decks was designed in 1896 by Maurice Otto Wegener. Okay, la, na, 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 na. <clears throat> All right, the first Brotherhood of Light Egyptian tarot cards were designed by Gloria Beresford in 1936. In 2003, Vicki Brewer redesigned the original black and white Brotherhood of Light images, and in 2009, she completed these full color Egyptian tarot cards. Okay, so uh, one thing I want to mention especially if you're into Egyptian stuff the way I am. And I have several Egyptian-based decks, and I'm thinking it might be fun, um, you know, to do a video on all the Egyptian decks and compare them. But the one that I want to show you is Travis McHenry. Um, this deck in the beginning of the book talks about how um, Egyptian everything was not at all based on the Kabbalah, on... Babylonian astrology, um, on anything like that. So he made this deck with those things extracted that do not belong to the Egyptian culture. This is a really cool deck. Um, I also have an Egyptian deck that is the worst deck in my collection. And if you um, search my playlist of deck reviews, you will find the Egyptian tarot and it referred to as the shittiest deck in my collection. Anyhow, 
Um, excerpts from the Sacred Tarot by C.C. Zane, Part 1, Meaning of the 22 Major Arcana. So we go immediately into the cards. And look, I flipped straight to the minors. There's a lot of information. Let me see here. So we go from the, the majors to the courts. They don't give us a um, like an introduction to the minors. We dive right into the aces. But we see that the suits are going to be scepters, uh, activity, swords is organization, uh, coins is policy, and cups is moods, activity, organization, policy. I like policy and moods. Okay, then we've got um, interpreting the cards. And we have a section on reversed cards, and then we have two sample tarot spreads. Uh, the sacred, uh, the yes or no spread, distant past, near past, present time, near future, distant future. Uh, yes or no, that's weird. Then we get magic seven. All right, I'm going to read this here. To answer a question, yes or no, five cards are dealt in a single row from right to left. The middle card counts as two points, and the other cards each count as one. If the majority of the points are dealt right and up, the answer is affirmative. If the majority of points are dealt wrong way up, the answer is negative. If the right way up and the wrong way up points are evenly divided, it's a draw, and the answer is unclear. Seven cards dealt in a row in this manner from right to left will answer a question briefly, and nine so arranged will give greater detail. The present situation of the matter is revealed by the middle card. The conditions or events leading up to it are signified by the cards commencing at the right. Cards to the left of the middle card show the conditions and events pertaining to the matter in the future. Then we have the Magic 7 spread. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Okay. I'm not going to read through that. Interesting that the, the um, you know the way to do yes or no readings. My favorite yes or no is three stacks of cards. You deal out thirteen in each. You either stop when you hit an ace or you hit thirteen. If you get three aces up, it's totally yes. If you get no aces up, it's absolutely no. If you get two aces, probably yes. One ace, probably no. And you can make that four cards to make it even a little bit more. Um, nuanced, I guess. All right, here are the card backs. And we have uh, the four fixed signs. There's a person, so the angel, the lion, the bull, and the eagle. There's a, a woven uh, six-pointed star here with some astrological, so, well, the, the signs for each of um, those images, the fixed signs. So obviously, mate made to be non-directional. Then we have Brotherhood of Light Lessons, 21 home study courses in 23 books. Damn! Humans live in two environments. A vast amount of observation indicates that the inner plane environment has as much influence over thoughts, feelings, behavior, health, and the events which enter life as do outer plane conditions. The Brotherhood of Light lessons are published by the Church of Light to make this information available. So we have laws of occultism, astrological signatures, spiritual alchemy, ancient masonry, esoteric psychology. And we go through here to personal alchemy. And look, there's uh, light.org is the website, and there's an 800 number. <laughs> that, uh, that's kind of impressive. The mantram or the will or the synthesis of, oh, the mantra of the will, or the synthesis of magic. And this is from the Sacred Tarot by C.C. Zahn. I actually have to get out my magnifying glass. My, this is going to be a heavily edited video because everything's blooming, and I've got gunk in my throat, and I've got gunk in my eyes, and I'm having a hard time seeing right now. So let's see here. The human will, one, enlightened by science, two, and manifested by action, three, creates the realization, four, of an inspiration, of a, of a, no wait, 
creates the realization never mind the realization for of a power which it uses or abuses according to good or bad inspiration five in the circle which has been traced for it by the laws of universal order after having surmounted the trial six which has been imposed by divine wisdom he will enter by his victory seven into possession of the work it has created and establishing his equilibrium eight upon the axis of prudence nine he will rule the oscillations of fortune ten so i guess that we're going through the majors here the force eleven of man sanctified by sacrifice twelve so that's the hanged man their fortune obviously is wheel of fortune which is the voluntary offer of himself upon the altar of devotion or expiation triumphs over death this divine transformation 13 raises him beyond the tomb into the ser serene region of infinite progress and opposes the reality of initiative 14 to the eternal falsehood of fatality 15 the course of time is marked by ruins 16 but beyond every ruin one sees reappear the dawn of hope 17 or the twilight of deception 18 unceasingly man aspires to that which ever flees from him and the sun of happiness 19 sun of happiness will only rise for him beyond the tomb 20 after the renewal of his being by death which opens to him a higher sphere of will intelligence and action every will okay 20 is the tomb okay all right, yeah, yeah. Every will that lets itself be governed by the instincts of the flesh abdicates its liberty and is bound to the expiation 22. So that's the world of its errors. On the contrary, every will which unites itself to deity in order to manifest truth and work justice enters even in this life into a participation of divine power over beings and things. Recompense 21, eternal of free spirits zero okay wait wait zero so tw what's 22 then there's only 22 major arcana but they're doing 22 and including zero i'm very confused okay well on we go this is a deck that's going to need study obviously okay here's number one so the cards themselves um, and this, I'm assuming, is the magician because it's card number one. There's Mercury. We do have something recognizable. He's holding up a wand. Look at the little star falling here. There's a cup, a coin, and a blade on the table. There's a, looks like an ibis there. We have the letter A and a, okay, we've got the, the uh, Roman numeral one, Arabic numeral one, the symbol for Mercury, uh, a Hebrew letter, and I'm assuming that's Egyptian. We have that violet border and the letter A. Now B is the high priestess. We have Virgo. I don't understand those, so yeah, I don't know what that is. Wait, part one. You know, it doesn't tell us uh, what we're looking at. The divination arcana one may be read briefly, briefly as will or dexterity. Expresses the blah, 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 and the physical blah, blah, blah. But it does not tell us what this is. Goodness. Uh... I'm very confused. Okay, we continue. So she's recognizable as well. Here's the Empress. Letter G, Libra. Could be confused with High Priestess because she's got her foot on a crescent moon, so we see some crossover between these two cards. Then we have four, Scorpio, D. And there's that, you know, Jupiter symbol or letter four symbol of the crossed legs, which I know that's a whole rabbit hole unto itself, but here's the emperor. Here's the hierophant, Jupiter, and E. 
Okay. Uh, the first, okay, I'm going to get confused. I was thinking about the first nine majors corresponding to the first nine minors. Um, but I thought they all had that vial. But anyway, here's number six, the lover's card. How interesting that they're kind of turning away from each other. Got the figure with an arrow up here, Venus, and we have UVW. I am so intrigued. I am so intrigued with the alphabet on these cards. Here's number seven, the Chariot, Sagittarius, and Z. Uh, this is Justice, so the eight card is Justice. Hold on. Yes. We can tell that, and you know, we've got a lion here, so it's like, okay, this is strength. But it's justice because we have a figure seated, blindfolded, holding a scale, being protected by Mott here, and the letters H and CH. The hermit is Aquarius. How interesting that we've got two, like Uraeuses, with the two crowns of Upper and Lower Egypt, TH. I, Y, J. You can see why those are grouped together. And this is Uranus. Here's the Wheel of Fortune. Then we have Neptune for uh, strength, the 11 card, C and K. So you see the, the letters that are, when there's more than one, they are letters, you know, C and K can sound alike. Here's the Hanged Man, Pisces and L. And look at him dropping things. What's he dropping? Looks like coins. And we've got stars in a configuration up here. Hmm. That was Pisces. Then we have death, Aries, really, and M. I like the rainbow. <clears throat> then we've got temperance, Taurus. N. I don't know what these are, just plants down there. And I don't know what the things are around the head. They're little lamps that are lit. Then we have Saturn for the devil, yes, and X. Look at these, these must be big bundles of incense burning. And these look like dead plants, maybe? I don't know. Is that a rhinoceros? I don't know that either. Very interesting. Here's uh, the tower, absolutely. Mars and O. We see that lightning bolt strike in the pyramid. Then we've got Gemini for the star and FPPH. And I mean, all of the things we're used to seeing are really there. A foot in the water, a foot on land, pouring, you know, from both sides. This is golden, that's blue. So color, they talked about color. There's going to be a lot to get into here, and now I want that book <laughs> real bad. I think I might drop a link to my books wish list. Anyway, here's cancer. S-H-T-S-T-Z. Sounds. Here's the moon. I like the black and white of it. Then we've got, and how interesting that it's Cancer, but you know, we've got a scorpion there. Here's the sun, of course, Leo, Q. And it's, you know, lots of little symbols and things that I don't know. I like the circle of flowers that they're standing in. So this is kind of like a lover's card again. And we have uh, grapes and apples, or is that tomatoes? Well, those look like tomatoes. Those are tomatoes. Grapes and tomatoes. How interesting. She's a tomato, huh? <laughs> People of a certain age will be laughing at that. Uh, here's the moon and the judgment card and the letter R. So here they are all rising up. Here's 21, which is uh, S, and that is clearly the world card. We have the four fixed signs. And then 22 is Pluto. So I'm still confused as to why there's a zero card mentioned. 
Um, at any rate, we have the full here at Oh, looky, an eclipse. <sighs> There's yeah, crocodiles, the letter T. All right, now we're into the minors. King, Aries. King of, all right, that looks like it's probably a, uh, well, duh, club. All right, so I'm looking at that. Is that a wand or a blade or what? No, it's a club, looky. Clubs equal wands. And we have um, a lot to look at in the image. <clears throat> oh, okay, so we're doing all the kings. All right, that's kind of cool. I sort of like that. And, you know, I think it's a good um, exercise to do. <laughs> My sister-in-law. Hi, Dee. I'll call you right back. Um, it's a good exercise to do with any new deck when they've got the, you know, all the, the um, cards of a single suit together in consecutive to resort them with all the kings, all the queens, but because then you can really start to see what's the same and different about each one. That's a good, good learning tool. Here's the king of uh, blades. What is it? There's scepters, blades. Uh, wait. Yeah, it's weird that they don't even tell us this until we get way back to the minors. Uh, scepters, swords, coins, and cups. All right, so the only one that really changes is wands. Scepters, swords, king of swords, king of coins. I like the way they change the way they're looking. You know, this one's going, going. Um, fire, air, earth and water. Oh, now it's foot on a crab. Gemini and Cancer. All right. Then we have the queens. So, so the kings are the first four signs in the zodiac. Then we go to the queens. So fire for wands is Leo. So we go to the next decan of fire. There's the queen of wands. Leo, the queen of scepters or the swords I'm sorry swords is Virgo all right wait Gemini so we have earth for swords and air for coins that's kind of fucked up that's kind of really fucked up never in a million years would I think of swords as earth in any way, shape, or form. But here they are, spades, Virgo. All right, Libra is coins. Interesting images down here. We've got black borders on these. The kings had uh, black borders as well. All right, I'm not gonna get too caught up in the color of everything because we'll be here forever. So there's the Queen of Cups, Scorpio. And here's the jack. <laughs> so that would be the knight. What are the pages going to be, I wonder? Jack of wands, Sagittarius. Jack of swords, Capricorn. Jack of coins is Aquarius. And jack of cups is Pisces. So again, we go to the third decanate. And oh! Then we have H. What the fuck is H? I guess we gotta look at the courts here real quick. Kings, queens, youth, and horsemen. So the youth is the jack. And, let's see, wait. The youth of scepters, let's take a look. Youth of scepters, yes, Sagittarius signifies a person, blah, 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 blah. Reverse it indicates. All right. And then we have the horsemen. So I guess these are more like the pages and these are more like the knights. Horseman of fire is a lion. So these just have the four uh, symbols of the fixed signs. And then we have the bull. Coins is the what? 
Oh, what? Uh, okay, yeah. Co coins is air. It's just fucking me up. There's the angel and then the eagle for cups. All right, yeah. Really fucking me up. All right, so here we have the one of wands. We have Aries, Aries, Mars. This ace is Capricorn, Capricorn, Saturn. Libra, Libra, Venus for coins. Cancer, Cancer, Moon. Now the twos, we have, okay, so the aces are the one deck, first deck in it. The twos are the first and second. Aries, Leo, Sun. There's, we have like constellations of stars and these are pippish. So you're really going to have to get your information from, you know, upper and lower corners. Taurus, Venus. Libra Aquarius. That is going to mess me up so bad, Cancer. Scorpio and Pluto. So Aries Sag. Jupiter is the three. Okay, okay. okay. I, I got off. I Never mind. The threes. Okay. Aries Sag Jupiter. This is Can Capricorn Virgo Mercury. All right, you can see these symbols, right? I'm not going to say every single one of them, so we can whip through here. I do not recognize the constellations. We got the fours. Now we're moving into the double second decanate of fire, and we've just changed to red. Okay, wait, wait, wait. I know I said I wasn't going to do this, but here I go. So the ones are purple. So are the twos. The threes, okay, we've got purple and then a darker purple, and the threes are yellow, the fours are red. So one imagines the fours have a correspondence to fire, I guess. And then the fives are another kind of purple. <laughs> we have more colors. Then the sixes, we're back to yellow again. The sevens are a, a, a kind of a pink. The eights are a dark blue. And the nines are light blue. And the tens are white. Well, as I am known to say frequently, fascinating. <laughs> Let's give it a blessing and see what kind of a reading we can get out of because you know the proof of the pudding is in the eating. So the proof of the deck is in the reading. <laughs> I think we have a new cheesy saying on this channel. All right. By air and fire, may you be purified and charged. And I give gratitude to the creators of this deck from way back in the 30s till now. I think I'm going to keep my magnifying glass close to hand. And my eclipse charged ocean water. By water and earth, may you be blessed and made whole. Oops, it already soaked some up on the side there. Whoopsie. by the sound of the bell, may the spirit awaken. <laughs> Guides and guardians, allies and ancestors, I love you. Thank you for being here. Help me work with this deck, which has quite a lineage behind it. I offer you fresh water. I offer you the fire of Azrael to bring in the spirit of divination. And let's get these two cards out of here and let's shuffle. I love, I mean, this is so easy. This is why I love US games. And then let's do a cut. And another shuffle. I've begun cutting in between my riffles so that you get, you just, 
even better mix, you know. Get the water off of here. <laughs> Never miss an opportunity for a blessing. Ever. Can you have too many? No. Alrighty. Now, I'm not going to do the readings that they show in the back. We're going to do our regular old six card. And now let me focus in <clears throat> to the spirit of this deck and again send gratitude out to, uh, where'd the box go? Vicki Brewer. Out to Vicki Brewer and Cece uh, Zahn. Cece Zane, I'm sorry. Okay, there's our first card. We have the Eight of Cups. We have Pisces, Cancer, Moon. The next one out is the Horseman of uh, Swords. So the Horseman of Earth. And, you know, ways that you can easily remember um, what the suits in a playing cards, what the correspondence is to Tarot. Think about a spade. What do you do with a spade? You dig in the earth with it, right? That's going to be my saving grace as I get severely confused about swords and earth. Um, diamonds and cups, no, hearts and cups are the correspondence there. See, it's just, it's fucked up because we've got a masculine symbol and a feminine element. Then we have uh, the Ten of Swords. So I see a little bull up here. How interesting that we get two of the cards and these would be consecutive. So I still didn't even get the greatest shuffle. Anyway, we have uh, the Star. We have another Horseman of Wands, and then we have the Five of Coins. All right, I'm not even going to try to go intuitively. We're just going to go straight for the book. Okay, the Sevens, the Eights. Um, divinatory significance of the Eight of Cups is extravagance. Its inner interpretation is self-sacrifice. Okay, so I right away want to look at it in con uh, comparison to RWS and Eight of Cups there is about walking away, um, acknowledging something as a, a lost cause, withdrawing emotional energy, walking away. Um, extravagance and self-sacrifice don't really divinatory significance, but the inner interpretation all right, let's just hook into those keywords. Extravagance, self-sacrifice. Then we get the Horseman of Swords. Denotes thoughts of enmity, strife, or sickness. Right way up, it indicates thoughts devoted to the defense and protection of the client. Reversed, they are plans and desires for his ruin. All right, hold on a minute here. Where did I see... I think it was how to interpret the cards, where they talked about reverses. In all the methods of reading, the cards are dealt face downward and they're turned over from top to bottom, one at a time, as read. Any card right end up is considered slightly more fortunate than its common significance. It then becomes like a planet receiving a good aspect. Any card wrong end up is slightly more unfortunate than its common meaning. It then becomes like a planet receiving a bad aspect. But reversal never makes a good card bad or a bad card good, as Saturn and Mars are less evil when well-aspected and as Jupiter and Venus are more potent for good when well-aspected, in the same manner any card is improved by being right end up. So it doesn't talk anything about the inner, outer, you know, and with this card it didn't mention um, reversed. So thoughts of enmity, strife, or sickness. Thoughts devoted to the defense and protection. All right, so we could talk about extravagance and self-sacrifice and this being um, bringing enmity, strife, or sickness. 
plans and desires. So the horseman, though, who he? This is going to take some doing. All right. Pisces Cancer. So Pisces Cancer, we can talk about getting lost in emotions a little bit. I'm just grabbing anything I can here. Taurus is about um, practicality and I guess uh, actual manifestation. So we overindulge, we get sickness, maybe. Does that work? I don't know. Then let's look at the Ten of Swords. Divinatory significance of the Ten of Swords is sudden loss of employment. Its inner interpretation is practicality. There's just not a lot to hook into here, you guys. Um, but we do have something <clears throat> about each of the uh, numbers. So the planet Uranus is the general significator of uncommon pursuits, the sudden changes of fortune, the inventions, discoveries, and of unconventional relations and actions. Therefore, the tens in their more common divinatory significance must relate, according to their suit, to one of these things. But in their higher application, they reveal the influence of and can be interpreted by the zodiacal triplicities. Invention, discovery, sudden loss practicality. Okay, so we've got enmity here and sudden loss. Both of these things have the bull. Hmm. Okay, let's keep going. I'm glad we have a major here. And this is the star. In divination, Arcanum 17 may be read as truth, hope, or faith. Arcanum 17 expresses in the spiritual world immortality. In the intellectual world, the interior light which illuminates the spirit. In the physical world, hope. So we get spiritual, intellectual, physical. Okay, body, mind, spirit. That's cool. We have Gemini here. Remember then, son of earth. Ooh! Remember then, son of earth, that hope is the sister of faith. Shed thy passions and thy errors in order to study the mysteries of true science, and the key will be given thee. Then a ray of divine light will break from the occult sanctuary in order to dissipate the shadows of thy future and show thee the way of happiness. If Arcanum 17 should appear in the prophetic signs of thy horoscope, whatever may happen in life, never injure the flower of hope, and thou wilt gather the fruits of faith. Okay. So we definitely got strife going on up here, but then we have hope, and let's see what this dude's about. The horseman of scepters denotes thoughts concerning business. Right way up, it indicates thoughts advantageous to the client. Reversed, it signifies thoughts opposed to business interests. Okay, let me see something. A person ruled by the sign. A person ruled by Aries. So kings and queens have are, rule a person ruled by a particular sign. And so to the youth. So the kings, the queens, and the youths, the J cards, um, take up the actual signs. And those all signify a person. But these, the horsemen, signify thoughts. So like this is thoughts of strife or sickness. So we're having thoughts of bad things happening and that can lead us to um, overindulgence and self-sacrifice. Um, what was the other for that? Uh, extravagance and self-sacrifice. And then this, what was that again? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for hanging with me, you guys. Um, practicality, sudden loss of employment. So we do this. We're preoccupied with bad things. We overindulge. We could lose our employ uh, employment. We need to be practical rather than emotional and catastrophizing. There's hope. We need to hook into hope and faith. 
Gemini in the mind, you know. Then we have, oh, what was that one again? Mm -hmm. Thoughts concerning business. Okay, so when we're overindulging because we're freaking out, we can lose employment. If we dial into hope and faith instead, which, you know, bad things are going on, we have to sort of hand it over to spirit, hook into our spiritual self, which engenders faith and, you know, helps us reframe our mind. And then we have thoughts that can bring us into new business, new activity, new creativity. Then down here we have the five of coins, which will be interesting you know, to see it with air. All right, Jupiter in astrology is the general significator of good fortune. Therefore, the fives in their more common divinatory significance must relate to good luck in the particular department of life signified by the suit. But in their application to higher planes, they reveal the influence of and can be interpreted by the fifth decanate of each zodiacal triplicity, starting with the movable signs. Ouch, my brain hurts. So it doesn't tell us why. In astrology, Mercury is over the aces, and uh, Virgo is the twos, and Libra is the trays. And they have the deuces and the trays. I love it. The fours is Scorpio. The fives, Jupiter. Six is Venus. Seven Sagittarius, eights Capricorn, nines Aquarius, and tens Uranus. Why? <sighs> okay, so there's an open question now whether I actually want to get that book because there's a lot of <clears throat> restructuring of my brain <laughs> that would have to happen to read these. So let's go back to this five of coins here with. Aquarius, Gemini, and Mercury. Five of coins is abundant wealth. Its inner interpretation is inspiration. So, the, I mean, it's like the dead opposite of what I am accustomed to. That five of coins as Marianne on Revealing Light calls it, is the little death card. It means loss on a very practical level. Okay. Let's see, very precious. I'm just looking at the coins. Intuition, fidelity, reason, inspiration. Okay. All right. So, <clears throat> this is abundance. So, we're getting led here that if we want to have... Um, our physical wherewithal and we want to have abundance um, and inspiration abundant wealth so that's earth coins and inspiration this is wacky this might be a little too wacky but we can pull a reading out of it so we've got um, you know, all of that at the top, getting ourselves into trouble by our negative thinking and trying to escape that negative thinking by indulging, by sacrificing ourselves, you know, um, possibly in the loss of a job, we dial into hope and faith, we start getting new business ideas, and then we're inspired and we bring abundance back into our lives. So even though that took me a lot of looking up and head scratching, the, the message here is obviously very simple. Very simple, very clear. Um, what's not clear is my head right now. I am, I'm like wigging. <laughs> this uh, deck put me, yeah, this, this is like, <laughs> what do you think? What do you think, you guys? I mean, this could be one of those things. And uh, you know, I've always been into Egypt since I was a very little kid. Um, this is kind of scrambling my brain as far as that goes. And I'm very, feeling very pulled towards Travis McHenry's deck again to really get 
the Egyptian essence here because this does scramble together, you know, Babylonian stuff and Hebrew stuff and Egyptian stuff and garbles it to the point where I don't know. I, I mean, it's hard work. It's not like it's going to, um, okay, I just had an example pop into my head. It's like if you play guitar and your fingers are used to those chordings and the, that tuning and stuff, and you switch to violin, mandolin, ukulele, something like that, and you can run the risk, like you, you play guitar for a long time, then you play ukulele for a long time, and when you go back to guitar, you might have to you know, redial into um, what you know about guitar. But if you've been playing guitar all your life, that's not going to be shakable. Same thing with my understanding of tarot. What I understand about it is not going to be shakable, but this is just like a whole new damn thing. So this would be a good deck if you're feeling very stale on your regular tarot and you really need your brain shaken up so a new message can get through. That would work with this deck. <laughs> Beyond that, though, who we? What do you think, you guys? Comment down below. Let's have a conversation. Buy me a deck if you want your own reading. And uh, hit the like button on your way out. Possibly hit the uh, subscribe button, too, if you haven't already. I will see you next time. Until then, this is Luna. Blessed be.